Last week you found Meg doing some multitasking as we sailed for shelter, where we discovered a fizzing battery under our chart table. We sailed back out to beautiful Walker Cay, where we found an islet, a cheeky bird, and a couple of stingrays. Okay, so this week we get down and dirty and we teach you guys how to service your sheet witch. <laughs> Yeah, I know, it's a bit of a techie one, and if it's not your kind of thing, then slip on down to about halfway through the vid, where we're out at beautiful Trunk Reef, and I'm doing some yoga, and you might remember last week we were hunting out a shipwreck, so this is the place we go to see if we can find the sunken ship. So I'll hand you over to Darren now, and he's going to take you through how you lube up your sheet winch. Rightio, we've got a uh, bit of a job on today, we've got... We've got to service all the winches, or all our primary winches anyway. This isn't particularly one of our primary winches, but um, this is the one that we're going to service for the for the footage. And um, it's an Arco 45. Usually, what I do is I wait till there's a little bit of a sign of um, stiffness, and you can sort of see that this is it, it's it's quite stiff to turn. So. It's uh, it's tool time for this little fella. No, uh, anyway, I'll I'll run you through what what actually happens here to, to service these particular winches. They're all the same, but a little bit different. Anyway, we'll get we'll get down to it. Darren starts by disassembling the top section of the winch. There are three circlips that hold the top of the winch together. The first holds the dress plate on. The other two hold the drum on. It can help to take photos so that you remember the sequence of things. Popping the circlips out is easily done with a small pointed tool. It's just a tiny little flathead screwdriver. It's great for getting in under the, the lips of these little springs. Yeah. There's one more here. Removing the last circlip allows Darren to pull the casing off the winch. Okay, basically that just pops off. With the drum off, the line stripper will easily come away from the top. Next come the three main bearings. That's old grease which definitely needs a clean up. So these are the um, inner workings of the winch. When you put the handle in there you can you can see there's two speeds so you can see how dry the gears are and you know it's it's, it's quite stiff anyway we'll pop these gears out for cleaning removing the split pin allows the gears to come free you can see the pawls in there they actually stop the winch running backwards uh, we just need to clean that up and re-lubricate that. Anyway, we'll drop all these other ones here. You can see it's actually quite tight in there, that one. That's, that's where probably most of the stiffness is coming from, that particular gear there. So the secret to get this, this little fellow out of there, there's, there's this sneaky little plate down there. And he just slides out. And you can see there's a little groove where he fits into the bottom of this. We just pull him out a little bit. And as you pull him up, you're turning. And hopefully. Put him aside for cleaning. This little guy in here. Oops, just 
coming out in two pieces. But you can see he just sits in there like that and the shaft comes in and that's where the pawls lock into as well. Anyway, we'll drop him in a bucket and we'll get some degreaser out and give him a clean up. Darren gets busy spraying all the parts with degreaser, working it in, then wiping it clean with a rag. You can soak the parts in diesel for this application also. Any sort of old excess grease I'd normally take it off and uh, just give it a tidy up. Putting the poles back together you can hear they work much smoother. As this grease goes hard after a while, they've been in the position where they're sitting, they, they get a lot of salt water uh, pouring over the top of them. And, you know, that's where the handle goes in and you get salt water running down the side there and into the whole winch. So. We do have some uh, winches in, inside the cockpit that never actually get wet and uh, you know they're still free as free. So uh, it's certainly the environment that they, they live in. After cleaning, Darren starts fitting things back together to check that they're working as they should be. In there, that was spring loaded to, to clamp down on the on the different size line. Sometimes you got to pop that out of there and just clean that up a little bit. But it's the same again. It's just got a, a uh, big circlip in there and it pops off. And this still feels quite good. So I'm going to leave it this time, and yeah, it should be all right. Next, Darren cleans up the split pins. So I've just got a little bit of emery and I'll just clean up this little pin here. Oh, like brand new. Get oil on there. Should be great. Darren then lubes up the pulls and the remaining moving parts of the winch. It's just supposed to use a little bit of light machine oil or probably motor oil or light gear oil because if you put grease in there the, the grease goes hard and they stick in and then the winch won't lock up it's, um, it can be a bit of an, an annoyance if you like same with this end just a little bit of tiny bit of oil in there Okay, so we've pre-lubricated everything. There's a smear of grease on everything. This little baby's gonna locate into there, so we've just gotta we've just gotta pop him in there. Hopefully line him up in a some sort of central position. Sort of turn him as you poke him back in into that gear and he'll just locate all by himself. Which he has. Fantastic. All our bearings have been uh, pre-lubricated. Same again, I've only just put a, a, a tiny smear and inside the drum as well. locking plate in there. Stops that one coming out. There he goes in there like that. Harkin winch grease is used lightly for a final lube up. Normally at this stage I'd stick a handle in just to see whether um, 
whether everything's good and he appears to be good. Now we can stick the top on him. Just pop that in there like so. Wherever you want your uh, line to feed come back to or where you want it to feed into like the cockpit for argument's sake. That's where you sit up, set your stripper up for. Okay. He feels a bit better than what he did before. Darren now starts replacing the circlips. They're made of sprung steel, so they can be a bit of a challenge. Just make sure he's sitting in the groove properly. Sometimes you get a little bit of inflate in that shaft. You can just lift him up and poke him back in. And Whack the top on him. And there you go. That's how you service a winch. There's not much in there. Anybody can do it. Beauty. Back out at sea and we're at Trunk Reef where I'm having a good old stretch on a breathtakingly beautiful glassed out morning. Well it is an absolutely gorgeous morning this morning and uh, I did a small yoga practice. <laughs> It's amazing how much the boat was rolling and I haven't done yoga for about a week and a half and I seem to have lost some of my flexibility, strength. Anyway, we are very excited. It is glass out situation and um, time to see if we can go and find this wreck or just some beautiful coral. And my Coming into Trunk Reef was a minefield of bombies, so we anchored up a good ways off where the wreck showed on the chart. Audio, settle up. Okay. Radio, floor it. Floor it, floor it. Floor it, floor it. Floor it. Okay, well that was an interesting little trick. We went all the way down to where the, where the wreck was. We couldn't find the wreck and it was quite murky water so we decided to come back to um, this spot here. We went across this massive wide area of sandbank with bombies all over the top of it. So, it, the water clarity is amazing up here. Isn't it bad? Oh, it's beautiful. And we just saw a shark and a turtle. So we're going to go and see if we can find the little turtle again. Say hello. Oh, that'll be good. So while McDazzle went off trying to snare himself a fish, I went on a ticky tour of the area finding a myriad of bombies stacked together like a maze. It was pretty cool ducking and weaving about while keeping a lookout for fish for Darren to snare. Unfortunately Darren came back without a feed, but the water was welcoming and once again nature was inspirational. So thanks everyone.
everyone for watching. We hope you really enjoyed the video. Uh, it was a bit of a techie one. We got asked for a few more maintenance one. We haven't done any maintenance videos in a while. So yeah, I'd like to hear your feedback, what you thought of it, whether you learned something or uh, whether you thought that was not your kind of thing. Please drop me a comment below. I'd appreciate hearing from you. So I would like to extend a very warm welcome to our newest patrons, Karen, Andrew, David and Bob. Uh, welcome to uh, our family and uh, we do hope you enjoy what goes on in the back end of Planet Sarian. Uh, if you are interested in contributing to our channel or becoming a patron, I have popped the links below to both the patron and our PayPal. Um, and uh, yeah, check them out there. And uh, yeah, there's some pretty cool things going on and some really good merch and rewards for you. So please do pop on to our patron channel and check it out. If you'd like to follow us in real time, uh, I've also popped the uh, links to our Instagram and Facebook pages where we post on a more regular basis. So hop on over there and give us a follow. So yeah, please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Uh, drop us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks everyone for your support and I uh, hope you're having a wonderfully inspired week and uh, we shall see you next time. Ciao for now.